Hey, what's up, guys? It's Money Monday. Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. We got Pushman Mitch in the house, baby. Yes, sir. Hey, let's yeah, get into it, man. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. We got Bushman Mitch now. So quick announcement before we get into it, guys. So uh, number one, patreon.com slash fresh fit. All the exclusive content there. Me kicking out annoying girls, coaching calls, answering your questions via the different tiers. Check us out of there. Also, we're on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Every single podcast you listen to, we are there. Uh, just click the anchor link below to go to destination of your choice. Freshfitpodcast.com, where you guys can get the merch. the merch. Ninja Watchers, Who Hurts You, and of course, the legendary I Feel Like shirt, because that's every woman's standard response when she's hit with facts. Now look, winter's coming, <laughs> so we need some hoodies, man. There yeah, you go. facts. And then uh, we got uh, the vlog channel as well for Fresh. Guys, behind the scenes for the vlog channel, us on dates when we travel, all things in between. Check it out. 50 on the way. Let's go. Or in today's case, uh, dates with the same girl every time. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, bro. Hey. And then also, guys, we're live streaming on Twitch, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. And then, uh, last but not, Chris, you want to talk about your Twitch real fast? Yes, guys. Find me on Twitch on Aaron Parkson. This weekend was the lit stream. Merch channel. Let's get it. All right. And guys, cool. for the best clips on the channel, man, go to our clip channel as well, Fresh Fit Clips. Mm-hmm. So check it out. And then, uh, yeah, and then Fresh Fit Podcast on Instagram, guys. Check us out over there. And mine is Unplug Fit, his freshman CEO. So, without further ado, man, we got Pushman Mitch in the fucking In the house, building, man. man. <laughs> Don't do more now, so like, last show. week, someone said, yo, you need this guy in the podcast. Who's this guy? Push man, Mitch. I'm like, yo, who is this dude? Mm-hmm. Look him up. Lifestyle, cars, business. I'm like, bro, this, this guy's killing it. Yeah, for real. And, yeah. and uh, you know, and then uh, uh, I saw that you were mutual friends with Neo and uh, sure. Bruce. You know, Detroit Mogul, and those are yeah. really two really good dudes. And uh, like, it, it's like y'all got like a like a little network where you guys are all fucking killing it, man. Yeah, it's yeah. not like, even little. It's a big network. Yeah, it's it's like yeah, it's network. like. Uh, you guys earn your leisure. You guys like got this like network where you guys uh, everyone has different niches and everyone like kind of works together, supports sure. each other. So it's like it's great, man. Yeah, it's just entrepreneurship. That's yep. really what it's supposed to look like, though. Uh, right. A lot of us ain't never seen that before. Mm-hmm. It's like rare. So even y'all saying it like that is how most of the people see it. Yeah. But it's really the normal. Like it's really Atlanta. We we did that in Atlanta. So when I travel, I do like free masterminds and I, I get them to build those little communities within every city. Yeah, so it's right. dope. That's what I was for to look like. We better with relationships. Facts, man. Facts. And, and you never know, like someone's niche might be able to help you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, all of them. All of them can know? help. It just depends on how. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even this, like it's a podcast. I mean, it's a play in the podcast game. Every, every, it's always bags. That's all I see is the bags. Mm. So that's what I teach. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the impact game. So I learn and learn how to get all these bags and I teach people how to do it strategically like systems. So that's the, that's the key to all of this. So we know who you are. Can you introduce yourself to the audience for the Facts. people out there that might not know you? Facts. So I'm Mitch. Um, I'm, uh, I go by Pushman Mitch on Instagram. So make sure y'all shoot that follow, but definitely, um, I'm from Philly originally. But I've been living in Atlanta for since like 2010, 2011. So I'm from Atlanta too. Mm. And, you know, I did a lot of traveling. My stepdad was in the military. So I'm from a little bit of everywhere. But I got one of the biggest rental car agencies in Atlanta. I got cars in Miami, Orlando, Houston, LA. And I'm going to probably keep expanding because this is why not. It's just more bags. I mean, the more cities, more bags. All I do is just. Wait, how many the, you said LA, Atlanta? LA, uh, Houston, Orlando, Miami, clearly in, in Atlanta. So it's. Uh, Damn. Yeah, yeah, I got cars. I got cars in DC actually too now. So I just hated on myself, but I got cars in DC too now. Roughly, how many cars do you have? I was going to ask that. Um, cars that I own, I own like fifty, probably fifty three now. But I, I got one hundred and fifty cars in my network. So Sheesh. basically, I understand like the relationships. Like I said, I don't need to actually own all of them to have the right. control over them. Mm. So that's the key. So I, I, I get into joint ventures. So I, I'll tell you a lot about that. That's just basically being able to. If you're in position, you got a vehicle or you have the ability to go get, you know, approved for one, we can get into a JV where you can just throw it to me. It'd be passive income to you, not to me. I'll run it, make, you know, make the system for it, run up a bag with it. So we making over 300000 a month in a rental car game by itself. So we just do it with systems. It's real simple, actually, when you, when you look at it. So before you became, uh, you know, financially successful and, you know, mm-hmm. built your business from the ground up, can you tell us a little bit about who was uh, – 
push man Mitch before the money, before oh, the, the the business. I'm I'm from start? I'm from meager. <laughs> I'm from a, the the poorest it can come. I'm from Southwest Philly, so my first couple cribs that I lived in, I remember like it was yesterday, like when I used to hit the kitchen lights, the cockroaches used to scatter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't come from a financial background or nothing like that. My mom worked at like a nursing home. My dad drove like trucks since before I was born. So that's all we really knew, just work. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where I was from. And um, I just worked every type of odd end job. Um, before that, I played ball. So I was a hooper. I'm, yeah. Uh, okay. He's pretty tall, guys. He's, yeah, he's yeah, taller yeah. than me. I think you got an inch on me, man. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. You kind of tall too, though. But I'm, I'm six five. And <laughs> yeah, I, I wear man. LeBron's. I'm six six. Screw you yeah. tall niggas, man. Yeah. Screw right. you <laughs> Still the door. I was like, nah, bro. We, we ain't doing this. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I thought we was about to run a scrimmage. I was <laughs> like, damn, yo, where the hoop runs at? <laughs> but yeah, so I, I came from hoop. I, that was my plan A. I didn't have no plan B. I never really. Study hard in school. I never really was too uh great savvy, but I I, I hold you for the people out there. Oh, I'm 31. I'm about to be 32 this so month. So fucking go, man. I'm yeah. 31 as well, bro. So yeah. look, look at that. You you kill, killing it, at a young I guy. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I, I think I hit my financial stride around like 28. Nice. Which was uh, I feel like is lucky too. People remind me of that all the time. They be like, you actually ahead of your time. Like people normally, Facts. men normally hit their financial stride in like their 40s, 40s, 50s, and yeah. stuff like that. So um yeah yeah, it's a it's a it's a blessing for sure. But um, yeah, so I didn't come from none of this financial background. I didn't know nothing about credit, none of that stuff. I got lucky mm -hmm. just by me uh, just going out and getting a whole bunch of jobs. So when Plan A ain't work, I went out and I worked everywhere. Applebee's, Crystal's. Uh, I worked. I used to be a bagger doing groceries. I worked at Dillard's, women's shoe sales. I ended up, my last job I had ever was at the jail. I used to work, uh, I was a, a, com a correction officer. Oh, Damn. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Shout out okay. to Rick Ross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I used to do that, man. It was, I, it was mandatory voluntary overtime. So I was working like doubles in jail. Like I was in jail for real. Damn. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of mental wear and tear that I do to you. So that was like my last job. But I, I was luckily there though, because that's the people who really changed my life for real. Because my chief, shot my chief Labot, he basically forced us to go into like budgeting meetings. Mm. So like, you know, I, I'm supposed to go back to my cell <laughs> and like I'm supposed to go to the cell, go with 80 uh, inmates and watch them overnight or whatever. But, you know, he's like, nah, I got to everybody got to go to the budget. I mean, I'm mad, but really he looking out for us. So, I mean, I'm thinking I'm all lit, but I got like a 400 credit score. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I got yeah. a 400 credit score. I just had bought me a Jeep. I bought a Jeep with a 400 credit score. You know, my car knows super high. So, Damn. <laughs> but that was like where I was at that point. But luckily I went to this meeting and then, uh, it was a dude teaching it. Um, he was like basically going over the budget and he was a cool dude came in. He was like, yo, uh, how the stock market doing today, everybody? Nobody hands raised. So he was like, yo, also, I was in a room full of millionaire. Everybody hands to be raised right now. Mm. And then he caught my attention. So long story short, I felt vulnerable enough to tell him like my, my credit score is 400. What should I do? And all of this stuff. And he told me exactly what to do. And I, I ran out there and, and did it. I got like a secure credit card. Nice. And ran a we told y'all to do that, man. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the play. Secure I mean, we, a lot of us don't know. In. A lot of us don't know. So, um, you know, he told me to get a secure credit card, run that for six months, make sure I pay it off on time. Bang. And then they're going to send me an unsecured job. There you go. And they damn sure did. Yeah. Told you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, That's how you get it to the credit yeah. game. We did an episode on credit cards. You know it's funny? Some people are like, oh, I'm just going to naturally find this, this stuff on myself. But right. you found a mentor yeah. and then the mentor told you what to do. Oh, mentors is men. I, I didn't yeah. even know that at that point. Because, mm -hmm. you know, most. So when, when it comes to mentorship, you got to find a person coming back from where you're trying to go. That's easy. But you got to also find somebody who can be that messenger that you're going to believe what they're saying. Yeah. So, you know, we got a lot of mentors growing up. All of us got people around us that's telling us the right thing, but we don't care. That's true. It's like if our parents telling us the right thing, I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. You ain't really got no bread like that. Mm -hmm. So if my mom was telling me about credit, I wouldn't listen because mm -hmm. look where we live in. Like, look how we don't, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's just, you know, it's not their fault, but that's just the reality. But, you know, you'll learn as you get older that um, there's a, those mentors, they're going to be in that form. So you got to just find people that you relate to. And then whatever message they give you, they give you. But you got to find somebody coming back from where you're trying to go. So, so is that the turning point when you were a CEO and basically you went to that money management meeting and you just like changed your whole well, outlook or perspective? Well, not yeah. It just it, it opened my eyes to credit. Okay. Which sparked other things, right? That along with a Steve Harvey commercial saying like, "Yo, if you don't, if you hate your job, then quit." <laughs> he was like, "Yo, if you if you hate if you get up every day, you hate your job and quit." And then he's like, "If you don't never go, um, if you don't jump, you don't never know if you can fly." So I just saw that I quit. I ain't had no plan. I just know the credit game. My credit's shooting up already. And then I just like, I'm going to just drive Uber in the meantime and do I figure it out, get my credit up. So, you know, like I said, I had that high car note, right? So I had a super high car note on my Jeep, but that's my dream car. So I ain't, I'll pay whatever they want right. for it, man. But um, I'm driving Uber 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Wait, with the same car? Well, no, 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 no. I had a Prius. Oh, okay. I, because of my good credit, 
I was able to go get that. Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> zero for Uber. Yo, yeah, this is me learning plays. Like, this is me. Like, I had, I didn't have a mentor at the time, so I'm mentoring myself. I'm out there making mistakes and learning from them quick. So that's what you're gonna learn. The entrepreneurship really is though, Facts. because you, you just gotta be able to fall on your face and then never make the same mistake twice. Well, isn't it funny? Credit was the foundation for everything. Man, what? Credit get every, everything that y'all ever could possibly want to do in life is involved with credit and, and debt. Listen, so. this whole studio is built on credit, bro. Our lives are built on credit. We, real, all, we, right. we always pay it off at the end of the month, though. Yeah. It's facts. I mean, yeah. you got to be responsible. Free money. Yeah. yeah, it's free money. They give you money with your signature. It's no no better place. I got every card that everybody ever wanted, and I just get it with my signature now because I did what I had to do. Sheesh. Nah, for real. Like, I pulled up here in a Bentley. Like, I, I, I got this shirt from Lamborghini Broward. So, y'all know y'all in Miami. Oh, so, Lord. for those who don't know, we in Miami. But yeah. they gave it to I just had to pick my Bentley up, and, and they gave me one of these shirts just because. But... And look, I'm seeing the iced out Rolex, man. I'm seeing the chains. Man, Listen, this, man. this is this Success. is a trophy. This in-person marketing, bro, because I'm not even that. <laughs> Hold up. We had this argument, right? I got a message like, yo, bro, why do you go. buy an iced out watch, right? <laughs> bro, it's marketing, bro. In-person marketing, for sure. Niggas want to make it, right? And what do they see? Niggas in nice cars, nice watches, nice jewelry. How do I get there? That It's just marketing, bro. Yeah, it's, bro, it's, it's, it's going back to that. It's an him, investment. Him academics annoying. <laughs> debated this for like three hours yesterday. Yes, bro. Like, like it's probably gonna be up on on his uh, Spotify off show. Uh, go check off him record. out, guys. By the way, on uh, off the record. But they it's an investment, bro. You buy that now, right? We six months to a year. It'll be like probably like almost five k more. But right. I'm saying watch, bro. It's five k more. You when you get it appraised, they're gonna appraise it at more. Uh, you're gonna get it insured. You don't lose. And then you, it's no loss. I mean, and and if you smart like me, you're gonna write it off. I'm gonna write it off as a business expense for sure. Sheesh. So you know, I had an argument about this for the CPA. I mean, you're gonna learn this stuff as you become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Not to get off topic, but you know. I was arguing with a CPA on live not too long ago, not arguing with her, we're just having a discussion. Yeah. So we having a discussion about it. She's saying that we're telling people that they can write off their jewelry through their business and they can't. And I said, I said, you got an old school mentality to think that you can. Let me explain to you a few ways, reasons why. I mean, simply because if you're marketing your brand and you're drawing leads to your business using this, it's, it's a write-off. But if you if you don't agree with that and you old school with it, then how 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 long does it take me to start an LLC for a jewelry company and then write it off as a business expense? Two oh, seconds. I go to inkfile.com. Uh, I go Pushman Mitch Jewelry LLC. And then now I, I bought it to advertise my jewelry business. And now it's a complete write-off. You feel what I'm saying? So at the end of the it's day, a way. It, it's yeah. a way. It, it's resourcefulness that comes with entrepreneurship. A lot of people are victims of what they don't know. Mm. And once you know, it is what it is. So once you understand that business owners get reap all the benefits, you're going to do all the tax benefits. It's just the reality. But people don't know that. So they're yeah. going, we all got to unlearn and relearn what it is because we go to the nine to fives. People like comfort, you know? Yeah, the, no, the it's not even It's not even comfortable. Room, yeah. We're uncomfortable with our nine to fives. Yeah. Yeah. But Listen, we still, we just, we got to unlearn and relearn what it really is. We've been bamboozled, really. So Listen, homie is cool. I'm gonna let you meet academics, bro. Yeah. Shut this nigga up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had a long ass debate about that, bro. They were nice, going back real. and forth on, on you know, buying jewelry and everything else like that. So, uh, real quick, I'll read these and then we'll get right back into it. Cool. Uh, we got uh, five bucks from Roberto, uh, Roberto Moreno, I think it is, or Robert Moreno. Uh, <laughs> where is it, Chris? Okay, yeah. Roberto Moreno. How do we use our customers' own car insurance to cover the rental car if we do not uh, use Toro? Actually, you know what? Keep that saved. Um, uh, Chris, can you make a note of that one? And then uh, Uncle Luke, 1980s, yo, act, 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 <laughs> LMAO. Nobody does it like Fresh Fit. Also, just so you know, y'all the biggest haters, are, your, your biggest haters are the first ones watching your shows. Mad love, guys. Thank it's you true, so much. bro. It's true. Yeah, facts. And then Albert Milan, just seen Walt's vlog today. SMH, we lost another one, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me just this, this real quick, right? So you're going to say something, right? I'm not new to the game, bro. If I'm with a chick more than one day, bro, it's because like she's adding values in my life. It's not like I'm going to wife her up, off rip, bro. It's like, yo, like, it's adding value. That being said, bro, if it's my life, I'll do, I'll do what the fuck I want to do, bro. So there it is. <laughs> God damn, niggas. They're going to keep roasting you, bro. You already know that. Uh, Noah Baptiste, uh, $10. Question from Fresh and Fit. And the guest, if you were an employee of a car rental company, how can an employee use it to network with people to get successful? Your advice is uh, helpful. Mm. Thanks. Don't worry. We will uh, talk about that oh. as well. Can you make a note of that? Uh, make a note of that as well, Chris? We'll open it up for a little Q&A at the end, guys. Victor Jimenez, I got 30 k sitting in the bank. Where should I put my money so it at least maintains value? Crypto index funds. Uh, that's, that's a good question. We'll talk about that as well. And then uh, Moster, ten hours. Excited to hear this guy's story. I came to the state from uh, I came to the states. I think he means from the Middle East when I was 22, and by myself, I'm 30 now. Work for a giant CEO with a 90k salary company. Thanks for bringing influence to people's lives. We there got you, go. bro. We got for you guys for sure. That's so, what we do it for. Um, did you end up going to college or no? No. Nah, yeah, I played ball at college. I went to Gardner Webb, and then I ended up losing my scholarship, leaving. So. 
Um, like I said, plan A ain't working. My body wasn't really built for what I wanted to do. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? My back was trying to go out since like I was young, since Damn. I was in middle school. But it, it got worse. Or, you know, I started, get, I got into a few car accidents, things like that. Damn. And then, uh, you know, it really messed me up for real. But um, I still can hoop, though. Anybody yeah. want that work on the court? Either, right? <laughs> but so, uh, uh, I just don't got, I can't move how I used to move, which gotcha. is the thing. Damn. Okay. So, <clears throat> so you, uh, you went to, you went to school, didn't yeah. finish college. Nope. Uh, you became a CO. Yep. Uh, how long were you a CO for? Like two years. Two years. From yeah. what What age? From like 26 to 28? Uh, or? I feel like I was like 24 to 25 or 24 to maybe, yeah, maybe 23 to 25 or something like that. Okay. I don't even remember the ages. That was like the fastest years of my life. Mm, yeah. I was in jail. <laughs> yeah. I was in jail. Like, and I was working so much. Like, I, like I said, we did mandatory voluntary. It doesn't mean time. jail like real Joe guys. He was a yeah. CO. <laughs> I was, I was like, it's like they make you, they make you sign up for two days that they can make you stay for overtime. For, so 16 oh, hours. Wow. So you was really doing that like three times a week for real. Mm. And so you'd be in jail. Like all, most of your day, like so most. Just think about like when you do this for for work. But me, most of my day, I'm at jail, and then I, a little bit of time at home. I'm asleep, and then I get back right. Yeah. Mm. So most of the time, I'm in jail for yeah. real. So that was my life for like two years, and it went by so quick, bro. So, so what got you into entrepreneurship? Yeah. Did that make, How'd you make, make that transition? Make, make you want to change or like? Yeah, I I luckily tasted blood. Like when I um like I said, I it's just based off of the Steve Harvey commercial, the credit thing. I just feel like I can make it make sense. I ain't have no plan. Honest to God. Yeah. Like I said, left I, with le- zero plan. I left. I left with no plan. Any money saved? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my pension, so I left my pension from the jail, okay. and I had a little bit of bread saved. I may have, I remember had like three racks that I saved. Okay. But at this time, you know, three racks was a lot. I didn't know how money worked, so three thousand was a lot of money. And then I had, I left like twenty thousand for my pension, and I had that as a cushion. Mm-hmm. And then I went out there and started driving Uber. I'm making twenty eight hundred a week though, doing Uber and Lyft. Oh, so wow. like when I would literally, I literally was working sixteen hours a day, seven days a week, like on God. I'm talking about me and my brother had walkie talkies, like like our phones was walkie talkies. Like he, we both, I got, he got the Ford Fusion. I got the uh, Prius and I'm like, I'm working all day. I, I do the whole joint on Uber. And then when the Uber kicked me off, I jump on Lyft. Oh, Damn. cause you can only work a certain amount of hours yeah. for, for Uber. Okay. Yeah. So I was going crazy. So, I mean, this is me tasting blood though. Cause I'm making more money than I was making at the jail for real. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I used to do Uber back in the day too, right? Bro, yeah. New Year's Eve, bro. I made $700. In one in one night. Yeah, yeah. I made I made about bro, fifteen hundred in one day. The surge, bro, was insane because yeah. it's like four, five times, six times, bro. Yeah. A regular fare for twenty, thirty bucks is no like one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Yeah, you can make a lot of money. I made fifteen hundred in like three days straight before, and they'll like have like outages like at the airport or something yep. crazy like that, and you gotta take everybody. Yo, you're making the quadruple the snow like in, in Atlanta. Yeah. If it's snow, it's like a disaster. Yeah. Oh. So you know, then they paint if you stay out and drive. Like I'm from Philly. So I mean, clearly it doesn't matter if you're from up north and you driving the snow down there because they oh, don't yeah, have the plows. Oh yeah, the snow down here is for yeah. pussies, bro. The, well, it they, doesn't well, even come close. Well, it, this is why I say it don't it's matter. It's because they don't have snow plows and salt trucks though. So up north oh. they do, but now yeah. if it is dangerous to drive in the snow in, in the south. Yeah. So I drove for, for it. it is what what I was comfortable for, and then I and then I stopped. But bro, yeah. the finesse was you go to the airport, you wait, and just do that over and over again. That was a finesse for. Oh uh, yeah, Uber. yeah. See the airport though, they they kind of um, it's a queue. Mm. So the key is though, but well, you you'll see that Lyft does this. They do a double. <laughs> so I know all the place. But basically, if you take somebody to the airport, they give you somebody to take you from the airport. Yep. If you drop them off, so it's a double play. But I was running it crazy. I was. This is I'm I'm networking though. I'm learning. I'm getting making relationships. This is why I started to understand. I'm making more money. I got my time. I'm starting to think, and then I'm like, all right, cool. I got this high ass car note. That's how I fall into the rental game because my Jeep is just like I'm like, damn, I can't justify this no more. Like, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I, fi- I luckily found out about this uh, app called Relay Rides. So uh, I got that, John, and and I started renting it out. And then all of it, well, that turned into Toro. So Relay Rides is now Toro. Oh, wow. But at that time, it wasn't. So I was renting it out on there. And then I take this Jeep that I only, I'm paying this car note on. I'm smashing. I'm like making 3800 a month. Oh, wow. Then I started making like 4200 a month because I can raise the prices as I'm getting my reviews. Mm-hmm. So I'm making like four grand off one car. I said, damn, this might be where okay. I need to move on. So again, like I said, I was working on my credit first. So now I'm in a position that I can learn the game. So I learned the game while doing it. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go get some more cars because I got this one car doing numbers. So I'm going to get a couple more. So I went to the dealership and I wanted to get like this in Atlanta when you're doing when you got yeah. that first car that made you 4K a month. Yep. Yep. Okay. In Atlanta. What so, car was it again? It was a, a Jeep. Tw- a, 2008 Jeep Wrangler. Jeep Wrangler. Dude, that, everyone tells us that's like the number one yeah. car. Yeah. I think Detroit Mogul said the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You said that, his Wrangler was booked until like the whole year. Yeah. 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 I, I literally couldn't keep it. Like all I had to do was double check on the maintenance. So um, I just had to make sure that thing was right. Keep on the road. That joint was paying the bills for a minute. So 
then I go get three more. So how I got three more was me learning the game. So I went and I had good credit now. I got like a 700 credit score. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, bet. I'm going to go um, grab me uh, I-8. I'm going to see if I can get an I-8. They approved me for it. Oh, shit. So they approved me for the I-8. I go pick it up from Tennessee. And then I'm like, damn, uh, I want to see I want to see what it did to my credit since I just bought that. <laughs> so I checked my credit after I got the car in my possession and it's not on my credit. So I'm like, damn, hey. it ain't on my credit. I said, I wonder if I apply for another John. <laughs> what do they do? So then I apply for another one. Clearly, I apply for a Tesla and got it. I was like, damn. That's two of them. So let me go ahead and check it real quick. This is how I'm literally learning the game. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn, let me check it. And it's not on there. I said, I'm gonna go get me a third job. So this is how I'm learning that like it's a 30 day period in between when they actually go to your credit report. You go, yep. So you can go to multiple lenders and get different loans at the same time. Within under, the 30 days. Within that 30 days, right? Yo, guys, right there, bro. That's the whole podcast right there. That's the <laughs> next game right bro. there, bro, is key. Yeah, yeah, it's just learning the gray areas. Yep. So um, I always say, uh, don't get more than you can manage. But at, you know, at the time, I was learning with no mentor, so I went and got a bunch of them, right? Yep. But the key to the is and it is, all how, counted as one hard inquiry versus several. Right, right. And yep. then the hard inquiries, you know, you'll learn that regardless of how many hard inquiries you got, you can get them removed because once you know the credit game is good. Mm -hmm. Anything that's not attached to an open account, we get them things off. But uh, long story short, I went out and got like four or five cars at one time. I'm running a play. I'm starting to make a lot of money. I'm making my first over ten thousand a month. I'm making fifteen, twenty thousand a month. You know what I'm saying? And this is what you got. What four cars out there right yeah, now? Yeah, and, and I and I just use my signature to get them. That's the that's the play because I'm using my credit. Mm -hmm. So I use my signature to get them. So uh, is this I'll, personal or business credit? This on personal credit. Okay. So wow. this is what I this is why I learned the game. So I got all these cars on my credit and it and messed up my debt to income ratio. Mm. Right. Yep. So so I always teach people not not to get more than no more than two on your personal credit. And then after that, you get into JVs, right? And then clearly, you learn to start it with a business, and then you can build What's a JV? A joint venture. Okay. So that's a joint venture that's like, yo, I got two cars on my credit. I'm making a lot of money. I can show you, lo, this is how much money I'm making with these two. Your credit good. Let's go grab two more. Mm -hmm. And yep. then I add, them, you I add them to the fleet. You get a percentage. I get a percentage. I'm eating. A percentage of something is more than nothing. I don't got to get the highest one. You feel what I'm saying? I'm building up my brand right now. So all of this time, and you do all the work. Like they, going, they just didn't put the money nah, in. All they had to do was just hand me them keys, and I was making it dance, yo. I'm okay, talking yeah, about. Yeah. I was making it dance crazy. So I mean, this is me starting to get thirty thousand a month, man. Like I'm coming from, you know, what I mean, two a thousand fifteen hundred dollar check every two weeks. You feel me? So I'm, 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 I'm learning the game. But also, like I said, I learned that what happens to your credit. Cause I want to go get a house now that you, I'm making so much money. That's it was ratio. hard for me to do. Yeah. So this leads me. This is this is me being mentored by my journey. <laughs> so I learned about business. Mm -hmm. Started LLC, and then I start you know selling my cars to my business. Once I got the business credit up mm. enough to be able to purchase the cars, right? And also, um, I just learned a whole bunch of different plays so on under all the cars government. under your business name versus yeah. under your personal right. name. Right. So so it's cool. So it's like right now, like it's dope plays going on right now. So the Bank of America play is crazy. So Bank of America with a brand new business, you don't got to have no history. You know, most of the time for a business, you got to have at least two years of business yeah, yep. before you can get a car under your name or you got to have some high like net 30s, net 60s, net 90s on your business account. And then you can go get a whip under there if you got the right profile and it's still going to get personally guaranteed. But you can't really just do that off a new business. But what Bank of America is doing right now is even if you got a new business and you get a Bank of America business account, you can do that business Bank of America fleet loan <laughs> and you can run the play. You can put the application in four times, the same one information, and they're going to give you four pre-approvals. All of the cars going to be on your business name. Damn. You're going to have to personally guarantor them. So your credit got to be A1 to do it, mm -hmm. but you can get four cars under your business name that won't reflect to your personal unless you default. Clearly, we run the play. We renting them out. So you're not going to default. So at the end of the day, we being responsible with it and we running the bag up with our business. Debt to income ratio is no factor. Yeah. So now we, you know what I mean? So now I can go and get four at a time. Yeah. So that it's, it's just plays you learn along the way and then you can start making income and you learn that you write off all the gas, man, all the mileage, all the maintenance. You get the, man, the business is, is doing anything on, under your personal is just, it's, it's not smart. Yeah. So yeah. you can only do it maybe to get started up. Yeah. In the beginning. And then you can write that stuff off too, startup yeah. costs. You, yeah. you learn all this stuff along the way. Like, I mean, that's why you need a mentor because. People like you, myself, coming back from where people are trying to go, they want to get in the game. It's real easy to get in the game, but to stay in the game, it's a little bit harder. So, you know, because then you got to learn how the insurance works. Yeah, so, without messing yourself up as well. Yeah. Then, obviously, if you yeah. don't know what you're doing, yeah, you can hurt yourself significantly they, from a financial yeah. standpoint. Yeah, that's why I got a course. I got a course out that I teach people how to do that so they don't got to worry about that. Because a it, lot of times... Is it open now? 
yeah, yeah, I got a course. I got a course right now. If anybody want to get the course, I mean, y'all can go to my Instagram, follow me, push man, admit, shoot me a DM. Yo, his could, links are all below, guys. I put them. Could you bring up his Instagram, Chris? I'll, I'll send it to you right now in the chat. Yeah, yeah, you can shoot me a DM with the word ride, R I D E, and it, it'll give you everything you need. Yeah. So, um, so, so, uh, so at Actually, that point, what year is this now? Then you're. Oh, go you fast, real quick. Yeah, yeah. So you gave us the positives of renting out cars, right? What are some downsides to rental cars? Like, I mean, it, it, I, all it is, I mean, it just depends on who you're talking to. So, to me, the downside of it is that you got to be able to be in the game a while to understand how to vet people who rent your cars. Mm. The downside, I mean, there's no really no downside because even in the the L's, is it, 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 what what's the next letter after L? M. M. That's the M's come from the L's. So, if you get into a, a accident, that it's a play on the accidents. Everything is a play. So if, if a car gets damaged, if you get into an accident and it's repairable, we're going to do a depreciation of value claim and they're going to give us any amount of money that is worth less now that it's been an accident. Gotcha. That's with insurance every single time. So like if I, I get into an accident, I'm probably getting a $25,000 check. If my Lambo get in an accident, I'm probably getting a forty dollars to $60,000 check. Mm. I can show you on my phone right now, my uh, my Wraith, it got into a pothole damage. Oh. They gave me a $40,000 check for depreciation Sheesh, of value. Sheesh, what? So, it, it's a play on that, and that's all <coughs> literally just liability through the insurance. Now, if the car is total, you got to have full coverage and, and uninsured motors. If you know the game, you literally, like I just bought a Lambo. I bought um, last month, you know this. <laughs> I bought the Raging Ball uh, Urus. I got the 200, it was 245,000. I bought that at 245. It got total. They gave me 300,000 for it, and then they gave me 10,000 for the wrap. So the wrap oh, was sat in chrome red. Damn. So I only bought it for 240. With my signature, yep. right? I ain't put nothing down. I put down 10 racks for it. So I put down oh, 10. Oh, they let you get away with only putting down 10? Wait, oh, how? Oh, oh, I'm in position. So I'll teach you the game. So oh, I'm in, wow. I'm in, I could have put nothing down. I could have put nothing down. I'm about to buy one right now. Yeah. Look, you got you off for 240? Yeah, yeah. I got me. The, so this is even when they, they hot like now. So I bought this like a couple months ago. So I got one for 240000 During got, the pandemic. Got, huh? Holy crap. Yeah, no, because yeah. I know they're like really yeah, high right it's now. It's a 2019 right now, too. It's 270 the minimum. Yeah, I just bought, I just got a 2021 the other day. It was 275, but it was, uh, it was the only reason I got it. That's another play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yo, it's too many. Yeah. It's too many, but I just got a 2021. I, I went, I went into Lamborghini Vegas mm -hmm. to get a, a 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on consignment because nobody got Euruses right now. Yeah. So the dude who was actually putting it on consignment to sell it to me, I already got a proof of finance and everything was done. And he backed out of the deal. Aww. So their Lambo had to give me a 2021, zero miles off the lot out of the showroom. So they gave me that one. So that's the one I'm pushing around right now. So, wow. um, so you but, actually lucked out on that one? Yeah, I, I, you call it luck. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Why'd that guy back out? I mean, it's just part of the game. I mean, he backed out, but I was already approved. So I know Lambo, they they do good business because they want your business. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm confused. How do you get, like, when he's paying 10K down? Okay, so this is so this is how it, it comes with auto financing, right? You got to know the underwriting guidelines. So if you got what they want, if you got what they want, your credit profile, you got you can negotiate a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So all it is is tiers. So when you first buying cars, you start off with like a Prius or something like that, anything under twenty five thousand. Yeah. Then you got over twenty five thousand. Then you got over forty thousand. Then you got over sixty thousand. You got to go from tier to tier with auto loans on your credit profile. So if I have a sixty thousand dollar loan, now I can go up to the next tier and give me a ninety thousand, right? And then so on and so forth. Now once you got a loan, an auto loan over a hundred thousand, and you already had Lambos and stuff like that, yeah. that's when you can go out there and, and put down next to nothing because you already had them. If you never had one finance, like I got a whole bunch of clients as NBA players, NFL players, they like, oh man, Mitch, I'm trying to get a Lambo, man, I want to pay for it cash, but they don't have no auto history, they don't got no right. auto trades, mm -hmm. so they need them on their credit report in order for them to go get them. So hold on, I just bought a McLaren, right? I just sold it. Mm -hmm. It was like one seventy k. I want to get yours right now. You Should can go get a yours without putting. You had it. Did you have that that on your credit profile, or did you buy it? No, I had it on my profile. Okay, good. So how how high was the trade? Um, would you did you had a whole one seventy five, or did you so, put down seventy five? So, only have hundred. So I put on like forty eight k, right? I sold it. I got some of the money back. And I want to go buy yours. But that's cool. I'm the only question I'm asking is how much was the auto trade that was on your credit profile? Auto trade? Yeah. So like the oh, loan. I mean, oh, the, how much uh, did, they, did you loan? borrow? Oh, like one fifty. No, sorry, one thirty-five. Right, like one thirty-five. That's yeah. all. So how long you had that on your credit? For like three, three months, four months. Not long enough. You gotta have eight months to a year. Damn. Eight, you have it on there eight months to a year. They can see you can sustain a car note of that nature, mm. and they'll be able to give you the next one. You can go up and get whatever car after you go over that hundred thousand, but you got to have it on your eight credit months. for a certain, for, yeah. Eight months to a year is the amount of time that you got to have it on there. Mm -hmm. After that, look, 
it's no fluff. I mean, I got I got the 2021 Cullinan Black Badge, mm. Rafe, uh, Lambo Yours, Lambo Huracan, McLaren, all, every car y'all could think of, I do them the same way. I get them under my business or my personal. The reason I can get them under my business is because I can personally go and tour them with my auto trades that I had on my personal. So all I had to do was start a business, right? Go into the dealership, go to the business side. I'm a personally going to it with my per, my 800 credit score and my auto trades over 200,000. They give me whatever I want. I don't got to put nothing down, but I can't. Just to, to, to manipulate does the also, note. Does it also assist that you're buying it under an LLC? Is that also does that it's, also that, let you get it with almost no money down? Because this is unheard of for me. I've I've always right. been told like with Lambos and cars like that, nah. you're gonna have to come to the table with like 50, 100, 50 to one hundred k. Nah, least. nah, that's when you first buying them. Mm. Like, do y'all, do y'all know people who've had multiple financed Lambos? Do y'all know people like that? Yeah. If y'all know people who have multiple financed Lambos, then that's when the people who don't have to put anything down. Okay. Like you don't have to. But you can't. And a lot of times you they won't say nothing about it because nine times out of ten, they're trading their cars in. Yeah. So they're not putting nothing down. So like, yeah, but I traded mine in. So they don't know the actual procedure. But when it comes to buying them, you got high auto trades. You don't got to put nothing down. You could put twenty thousand down if you want. You can put whatever you want, but it's gonna manipulate that note by maybe a couple hundred dollars. But you gotta feel the burn at the beginning. Get that get into that, those couple. Cars. Yeah, you just gotta get in, you gotta get in there. And once you in there and they on your um, you got that auto history. Now you can go play ball. So what if it's I like, can go get three at a time? Norm, normally I go get three at a time. What if under your LLC and not your personal? What do you mean? Like let's, so let's say I got the McLaren under my my uh, business, but not personal. The, it, if it wasn't showing up on your personal credit, then you can't use that tactic. But you can get it via your business because you had that auto, that auto trade on the business. Oh. You feel what I'm saying? That's that's all they're looking for. Underwriting guidelines. They're looking for these things. When you're going to apply for it, like let's say if you got a business. They don't want you to be self-employed when you're going to uh, get a Lambo. Hell no, they don't. They yeah. don't. So you never put it's that. It's kind of funny because that's the only way you'll make that kind of goddamn money. Exactly. No, but, but, but they know fun. that you can work for the company, though. So uh -huh. y'all own this. Y'all own Fashion Fit. I'm sure I got a company for Fashion yeah. Fit. Yeah. So and we all going to go get y'all Lambo. It's simple. You go in there. You say you, you give yourself a title, whatever your position is at Fashion Fit. Mm -hmm. And that's how you apply. You are employed by your company. And if they you know, most times if you got the right credit score, you've been living at your home. That's on your credit report for a, cert a certain amount of years and you've been working at that job for a certain amount of years, that's what they need to see. Good credit score, auto trade, been living at the house for a certain amount of time, working at a job that has some security for a long period of time. They won't ask for no <laughs> proof of uh, income or nothing when you got that profile and you got the auto trade on it, right? But if you don't, it's different. So I show people how to get the cars and like, and, and all you got to do is put yourself on payroll. If you got like a uh, QuickBooks, Damn. ADP, you put yourself on payroll, pay yourself a salary for like the next two months, then go get the Lambo. If they were to ask for your uh, proof of income, you have it because you paid yourself that amount you said you make. Mm. Yo, that was just so much gain there, bro. <laughs> Yo, Chris, can you pull his Instagram real quick? It's in the chat right now. Bro, that hey, was... Yo, guys, real. like the goddamn video yeah. right now. Yo, Yo I ain't gonna go, lie. Go. I have not learned so much on the podcast. Since this nigga, bro. <laughs> bro, I, I do this. This is what I do every day, two times on Sunday. Guys, Instagram Crush right Man here, guys. Mitch, man. Look at the car. Look at the lifestyle. Go follow him as well. Guys. Okay, so this is these are your IAs here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Rafe. That's my IAs, yeah. Green one, white one. The Eurus, the another IA there as well. Yeah, that's the Rafe I just told y'all. We got the 40 cal depreciation of value claim right Damn. there. Damn. Open it, Chris? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the 2021 right there I was just telling y'all. And all his links are below, guys. I put them at the yeah. top of the description. I also pin them at the top of the comments after the show, man. This is uh Yeah, yeah. Them dance videos get a lot of views. That's that money dance, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's the, Them dance videos get all the views, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, Chris, uh, exit. Come down a little bit more. A little bit more. What I saw was when you had the Aventador, bro. The that's... Aventador, that's that's a financially fits Aventador right there. That's, okay. That's a Aventador SV. So that's my brother. He, that's he my had... dream car right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's your dream car. You drove one before? You know Q Banks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, got yeah. two of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. You 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 drove one before? I drove in it, but I didn't drive yeah, it. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want it if you drove in it. Oh, they not com they uncomfortable. You ain't gonna want to drive it too much. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like that, but Wait, it definitely on. looks aggressive. It looks really good. Go watch this profile real quick, Chris. Go ahead, his, yeah, uh, yeah, that's my brother, uh, Financially Fits, SV, right go there. Uh, uh, Y'all follow finan Financially Fits on Instagram, Crypto uh, Go to very top, and then go to the link tree. So is your course in here? Yeah, yeah. You go to my link tree, you can get my course. If you don't want to go to the link tree and you lazy, just DM me. Like I said, DM me the word ride. Mm -hmm. We'll get you right together. And his links are all there, guys. Yeah. I put both of his websites there and his Instagram as well. What's the name of the course? Uh, rent my ride 101. Rent my ride just 101. Teach you, yeah. how to, you know, get spicy. Cool. It's teach you from a novice all the way up to an expert. So they see all the Lamborghinis and stuff like that, but you don't got to get caught up in that hype because yeah. I didn't start with that. Mm -hmm. And and the most of the money that I made was off the economy play. 
And I didn't learn that till later. So basically, remember that Prius I told you I was driving for Uber, right? Yeah. So now I'm making so much money. I know I ain't driving no Uber no more. I got to drop off, pick up, meet customers and all of that. So now I got this Prius just sitting there. I said, man, maybe I should tra trap this one out. And you have a fleet of what, three or four cars at this point now? Yeah, yeah. I, got, I probably had like five or six total uh -huh. before I realized um, what the deal was. Like the Prius was just sitting there. I was like, all right, bet. So now once I get the Prius, I said, look, I'm going to just put it out and then see how it do. I put my Prius out. I ain't see that car for a year and a half. <laughs> All my life. You know, funny. I met a guy, right? I used to rent cars before I, we got the Range Rover. Mm -hmm. And he's like, bro, I just got Mercedes, Jeep Wranglers, and economy cars. Yeah. He says he makes more money off of a, that, that, that than a Lambo. <laughs> yeah. And for like, people that don't know, can you tell them what an economy car is? Versus, economy yeah. car is like a Toyota Prius, a Ford Fusion, yeah. Hyundai Sonata, real, regular sedans. Yeah. Gas-friendly like, vehicles. Yeah, gas-friendly. And if it's like a hybrid, you know, these different cars that can drive for long periods of time that can last through a lot, that can have that high mileage. So those are ones that most everyday people want to use, right? Yep. So me, I had and to find cheap. a... Yeah, they cheap. And I had to find a place. So the play is... I was like, bet. So how much how much maximize it? Because I see they going all the time. And I don't, I want that's the way that the rental car game can be passive because it's not passive. It's passive if you got economies. But if you got like Lambos and stuff like that, it's not passive. That's daily. So the way I be setting people up, I got different business models I show people how to do. Mm. So you can do the economy play where it's passive. You got to make it do. So everybody who gets an economy car from me, they got to get it at least for a week. It's week to week rental only, not daily. Mm. Okay. Right? So if they're doing it through the platforms, right, let's say if you're doing Toro, it's so many different. Toro, hire car, get around, fetch truck, uh, avail. It's so many different apps, but Toro is like the household name. It's like yeah. Bitcoin or something. Yeah. And you use all of them, right? Yeah, Pretty yeah. Much. Like whatever, expert, one, whatever one comes in handy in the area that I need the car. Right. So the economy cars, um, I try to R cater real to. Real quick, so, for the, so the people understand, each of these are car rental services yeah. that operate in different jurisdictions. Right. And Some of them are not even every city. So that's why I like, you know, but me, I, I understand that I took over Atlanta. I had to move to really make the money. I had to move in different cities right? yeah of course. so that's what it was so is it mostly why is that mostly the, the reason why there's so many different uh car rental brands i guess is because of di uh different well, cities just well offer it's it? just it's a ne it's a necessity so it's, it's two things people are always going to need there's a place to stay and something to drive it's just a fact mm -hmm. so right now if anybody's following the news there's a shortage of rental cars so when you've been traveling like to the airports there's not really no rental cars at enterprise and stuff like that mm -hmm. but that's where it's a it's for us to be able to get busy yeah because we can just because we can just come through with the economy play and then run them so all my students is doing major plays gotcha. like before i walked in here one of my students just bought a maybach he was running the economy play he got 48 cars he did like 300,000 this year and nice. he just went and got a Maybach. <laughs> like, nice. you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. dope. It's dope. So, so I got back to what you were saying. My bad to disrupt. So you yeah. were saying the economy play goes as follows. Right. Sorry. So the economy play is you get them out. You don't never do it by the day. You got to do it by the week minimum. How do you do that? I, I'm going to tell you all the real full sauce right now on the economy play that'll get y'all crazy bread. Yeah, this, this is a, a to Z, guys. Get your notebooks right, out, man. So bro, I'm telling you. Where a, else are you going to find this, this content, man? I like this bro. video. Go follow homeboy here. Push my match, <laughs> man. Show him mad love to the, to the chat. Yeah, so this is the play. So this is what you do. Yeah. You take the, you get the economy cars. You go to, let's say if you're using Toro, you put in a listing that you only can get it for a week, never by the day. If you don't book it for a week, then you can't rent my car. Right. That means that you can't have your booking on uh, automatic booking. Right. You don't want to have it to where anybody can book it anyway. I tell all my students, do never put yours on instant book because a person with a one star person be smoking everybody's car, blowing cars up, leaving them out. They can rent your car. But if you got it off instant book, meaning that you vet everybody who takes the car, you can kind of be selective on who gets the car. Bet. So now because of that, everybody has to ask you to get the car. If they don't ask for a week, you don't rent it out to them. Boom. So, you know, you're getting a weekly minimum. Now, this is how you keep it going forever. So it, you you allow people to drive for Uber and Lyft, right? So you you using it for them to make money, so they never gonna want to bring it back. So you say, look, I got a, a Uber and Lyft program. If you get approved for Uber or Lyft to drive, let me know, and I'll let you drive this car for Uber and Lyft, and then you can charge another fee for that too, right? So now you got them booking it, and now all you gotta do is add them as a, a authorized driver once they get approved for one of those driving apps. So that means they've been past the background check and all of these things of that nature. So you're going to be covered by two insurances. You're going to be covered by Toro's insurance for the rental. And then you're going to be covered by Farmer's insurance, which is Uber's, right? So you got double coverage while they're out there trapping. They're never going to bring it back. Now, all you got to worry about is because they're going to be going for years. Like They're going to be going until that car is done. So every 30 days, you want to just check on the maintenance. Do you want to do that physically? No. All you got to do is go to yourmechanic.com. They'll drive up to any address. They're going to find a, a, a mechanic in the area. They're going to drive right to their house, do a three-point inspection, do the oil change, check the wheels, make sure the tires is good, the brakes is good. You just had the crib. All you had to do was send them there. Let them know, yo, 
30 day uh, maintenance checkup. They on the way to be at a car there too. It's simple. We make sure we got three trackers in every car. Every car has three trackers. All of them got kill switch, meaning that I could chop it off if somebody don't pay. Mm. And I never, it's full, all the way around, we good. You feel what I'm saying? And the cars be gone. So you talking about one, like Prius is bringing in like twelve to $1,400 a month. That's better than real estate cash flow. So if you got 10, 11, 12 of them guys and they pass it, they all gone, you really got your time because they're going for the months. So I, I set people up like that and they run a play and, and get crazy back. So that's what we teach pretty much. Yo, sign me up, bro. <laughs> you know what it is, yeah, man. Go, go, Dude, well, go, wasn't I tell you, bro, next year we're going to start like a rental business? Bro, that's it. That's that's a play right there. Yeah, because me and Fresh have talked about yeah. uh, getting into the rental car uh, game after we did our interview with Detroit mogul, Bruce. Oh, and, yeah, that's uh, my bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he learned like he got his eyes after you know what I mean. Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, yeah. but he, he breaks it down like goddamn. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Like, he, he not knows. a molecule. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's my, so that's, my that's the economy play. So um, what about uh, let's let's say the the um, um the luxury car way or, oh, yeah. or sports cars? How would you do it with that? Bam and Kevo, right? He mm -hmm. talks about getting a Lamb Lamborghini Urus, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you pay like two forty k for it, mm -hmm. you rent it out a thousand dollars daily in like three four months, five months, pretty much pay for. It. Well, about that. Well, yeah, yeah. No, the Lamborghini Urus is the hottest car in the game. I mean, point blank period. So we make around 40000 a month for them per car. So, uh, mm. but what we do is, it's just like, the reason why I like the Lamborghini Urus is because it's an SUV too. So the coupes, is a lot more risk. People can't drive them. You're going you're gonna to probably do a lot of insurance claims when it comes to those. Yeah. But they do, they are in high demand, especially where y'all are. Like, y'all in Miami, y'all yeah. are in any major city. Y'all can create niches too. So don't think that you got to be in a major city. I can, I got to play for everything. I got a business model for small towns to use exotics. But, but without that being said, it's very easy to make money. You can do photo shoots, video shoots. Okay. Right? This is now the exotic. Play exotics. Now. Yeah. Okay. You can do photo shoots, video shoots, right? Okay. You can have every, every listing is going to be getting books. I, I make it to where you can at least make 25 to 30, uh, 30 days booking because of, of the strategies that I teach. So all you got to do is take that listing that you got. Like you can go, if you got it on Toro, you got it on Toro. You put the listing in your bio on Instagram. You can run ads straightly to your cars. So they're not going to be having to go through the list of all the Toro cars. They're going straight to yours. So that's one. And then clearly you can literally go and put it in your bio and just run ads. I mean, you can just literally just post it on Instagram and just put daily pro promo, even when they book. Even when they book, that's the, the problem that people don't know about advertising is that even if the car is booked, you need to be promo on like it's not booked. So it can be always... You know what I mean? So that's just little stuff. But exotic game is easy. That's uh, it's going. You just got to have a high deposit, like one to two k, and then you get a daily rate. Don't ever go down on the prices. And Real you can quick. do daily for it. So the key is economies weekly, exotics daily. Daily, yeah. You don't want them to be gone for thirty days. Right. Real quick, we had a, a subscriber, a supporter here, man. Uh, what's his name? Yeah. He, he, I think he's the one I sent sent a super chat. Oh last yeah, time. he is. Yeah. Uh, Joshua, is it Joshua? Yeah, yeah, he posted earlier, and I reposted his Instagram. He said, "Hey, this is like if you ask Joe yeah. Rogan to bring no, on uh, David God. Goggins, and this is uh, my yeah, equivalent." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's a guy that just Sean yeah, Harris. Just Sean I can't Harris. believe y'all actually made my dream collab recommendations yeah. happen. What other impact uh, full show does that? What up, Mitch? I appreciate y'all here before 100K. Thank you so much, yeah, so, just Sean Harris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he uh, definitely is adamant. He the reason why his Don't the Marco, sure. Yeah, you gotta thank homie here because without him, we wouldn't know who yeah. you were. Yeah, no, man. And, and we, guys, we always, when you guys give us a guest request, man, yeah. we always try to make it happen for y'all. Yep. So, um, oh, man. So that, that was a lot of game. Guys, I need you guys to like the goddamn video. For real, man. Right now. I don't want to stop the interview. I'll read ch any other chats I got to read, Chris, real fast. Yep. Before we get and the next go thing. follow okay. bro on Instagram too as well. Push man Mitch, man. Uh, we got Seto Kaiba in the house. Is it true you could have too many write-offs? If so, how much is too much? Can we make a note of that one and save? And then uh, five bucks from Ikem. You guys have some really good questions. We'll answer them at the end. We got y'all. Yep. Uh, hey, Mitch, I'll be willing to purchase a vehicle for rental to get started and then expand from there. Dallas area, Army deploy, so, uh, soon like to invest. Cool, man. And then we got five bucks from Al a Ken Pierre. Bring on Naeem Boucher, IG, top real estate agent and multifamily investor, lifestyle, finance, and fitness. fitness. Trust me, write him down, Myron and Fresh. Okay. Right. Uh, we got 20 bucks, Steph, in the name of love. <laughs> this guy, Steph, <laughs> in the name of love. Uh, I'm a firefighter and just got my real estate broker license. I've been building my credit, looking to buy some property. Not many duplex slash multifamily housing in my city. What's the next best type of property I can invest in? Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I, dude, I go mean, single family homes, bro. Yeah. Uh, JC mechanic. That's that's pretty easy. Uh, that's all you got. That's all you got, bro. Yeah. Nothing wrong with single family homes. There's a bunch of guys that became rich off that, just that. JC mechanic, Scott. I have the course. One of my cars got crashed. Who would I talk to for vehicle devaluation claim? Okay, we'll answer that at the end. And then extra guac. Would a Tesla Model X be considered a luxury car play? Hmm. Uh, okay, we'll answer that one at the end too. Uh, unless that's like yeah. a quick yes or no. It's easy. Yeah. It, it is a luxury, a luxury car. car. Yeah. Okay. 
And then we got it's twenty not exotic, bucks. But it's a luxury car for sure. Jason Mechanic, twenty bucks. Thank you so much. You, Carl M- M- uh, Valkin, uh, twenty dollars super sticker. Thank you so much. And then Jason Mechanic Scott, I have the course. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's the one we read before. So uh, what, what was next, Fresh? Uh, cool. So we went everywhere there. So yeah. I, I got. <laughs> so so I guess we covered a bunch of points here, but like we talked about credit. We talked about how important it is for carrying cars. What about Airbnb? Because like you said before, I, yeah, so I do many Airbnb Someone needs to, to stay somewhere. I need to have a car somewhere. So. Absolutely mandatory. I do. I got Airbnbs too, so I got a. I got a course in that as well. I do amazing at Airbnb. So shout out to my partner Brickle Cigars. I don't know if y'all heard of him. He down here in Miami. We do. We get whole buildings and we trap them out. It's crazy. We do millions. So I think we at like one point two for the year. Damn. Um, I, I like how you said he chops them out. <laughs> no, yeah, like, no, it's it's just the reality. I mean, some people run plays and some people run plays. Mm-hmm, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, Airbnb is a no brainer. I mean, you own nothing, control everything. So, we basically go in there, we get um, corporate leasing, or we just go meet the people who are doing the build of the building, and then we get in there. We show them what we did before. We show them. We, it's easy to. Do you to actually something. purchase the property, or do you simply no, no, just no, we don't purchase the property? It, right? We don't purchase the it? property. Yeah, we lease it for sure. Okay. So yeah. we make a deal with them, and we. They know what we're doing and we, we we keep it clean. So we got full systems like smart BNB, things to make sure that we can literally organize all of the calendars for like home away, Airbnb, all the different platforms that you can rent from, even on orbits.com. So all of our stuff comes up and then we literally don't miss a booking. And we have a calendar that can literally make sure we get every booking and it, it blacks it out on other calendars when it's taken. So it, it, you got to do it like the hotels do. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah. So question with, with, um, you know, because clearly, like, I mean, are the, are the rental businesses like hurting because this hurts and thrifty and all these other guys? Because, like, uh, it's a, it's, it's a, I think it's a different feel. I think the hotels are hotels and the Airbnbs is a whole different feel. It's like you want to be like you more at home. You want to be able to cook. You want to do all of that stuff. So it's a different thing. It's a different industry. So even, I, I mean, just like every other thing, there's no such thing as saturation. It's basically like your question. So saturation is, is a myth. So it's just like McDonald's will be worried about Burger King, Burger King be worried about Wendy's. And then so on and so forth. So we all making money. I think they'd be fine. They be hating. They don't like it, but yeah, you know, I was gonna it's say part I'm of the sure, game. It ain't going sure nowhere. It's, it's part of the game. These billion dollar companies, they're not going. They're gonna make sure they fight in every way to keep in the game. So it's easy. Mm. It's something that's it's something that's like always gonna be around. It was doing it before they had a name for it. So if someone wanted to get started with this, let's say I see a couple guys in the chat like I want to get started on this immediately. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously they'd get they'd get you as a coach and you know get walked through on this. Mm-hmm. But what would be I guess like the an oversimplified version. Should they get their LLC started first? Should they start procuring cars first? Mm-hmm. How? Do, what do you think is the best way for someone that's a complete uh, beginner that wants to get into credit? I mean, credit first, for sure. Credit. I mean, but it's no, it's not like you can't do it at the same time. Like I said, my my course has credit in it. So if you get my advanced rental car course, it's going to teach you how to literally completely, how, how to actually pull your credit report and know what's bad and what's good. You know what I mean? Then how to remove everything, how to freeze accounts, how to get rid of hard inquiries, how to dispute anything, how to get approved for certain type of credit cards for funding. So let that Bank of America play that's in it. Um, Navy Fed play, um, Capital One play, how to get pre-approvals with soft inquiries. Everything that you're going to need to know to really get started is in there. But um, to go away from the course, anybody who's going to get involved in entrepreneurship, first should get a basis, which is their credit, fix their personal credit. Your personal credit being in order is going to lead to any business that you ever start to also have good credit because you can always PG it. So whenever I started any business, I started businesses with funding. So if I were Personal guarantee guys is PG, by the way. Yeah, personal guarantor. So whenever I started, let's say if I started an LLC today, if I started an LLC today, my middle credit score is like 820. It's always pretty good. So whenever I started a business, I got high, like, revolving credit. So I got $100,000 credit cards. I got $50,000 credit cards, $20,000 credit cards. So if I were to start a business, I would go to Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and I would get lines of credit for the business that I just started. And because I have good credit, I can personally go on tour of that. And they're going to be reporting only to my business. And I can get rid of the hard inquiries because it's not attached to account on my personal. So therefore, my good credit makes sure my business has funding to start out. Now, when I, as soon as I start a business, I can go get inventory. I can go get a storefront. I can pay for ads. I can pay for marketing. I can pay for, you know, influencer marketing, anything I need to make my business pop off off the top where you will have to wait because you don't have your personal credit in order or you have to have stacked a whole lot of cash. Yeah. Right. So personal credit before you start any type of entrepreneurship journal, because that's going to level you up. It's yeah. going to help Guys, you scale. We say all the time on the show. Credit is very important. He's doing plays here that you should be able to do by yourself, but you have buy credit, so you can't do it. Yeah, exactly. You can't procure the assets that are going to make you the money. And and this it's fantastic because you're taking something that's typically considered to be a liability. Right. And you've literally turned it into an asset. Right. right? So uh so can you tell us real quick? Um, I guess if someone were to make 
a fleet, like a, like let's say a, like the ultimate mixed fleet to to you know to get all types of different uh, to make sure their cars are rented out. Mm-hmm. What are the top? Let's say you run a five car fleet for someone that wants to just get started in this, or four car. If, let's say they want to do that Bank of America uh, play that you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. What are the four cars you would suggest they get to get their uh, first set of uh, cars? Right. It, it, so it, I get that question a lot. Basically, people try to ask like, "What is the best car to start with?" Really, it's just up to you, really. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're gonna go with economy play, just get economy cars. Get the ones that are the best with gas. So you right. want to get like Toyota Camrys. You want to get Prius. You want to get Ford Fusions. You want to get um, Hyundai Sonatas. Uh, minivans are good too. All these cars are cars that are like very cheap to get. Even if you did get them on your credit, the note will be like one or 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. You're making 12 to $1,400 a, a month. So that's nothing, right? So at the per, end of the day. On each car. On each car, per with, car. With the, okay. Per car. I'm talking about 400 a week. That's $1,200 a month, right? Yep. If you charge 400, you got it on a weekly rate. 400 a month. Oh, that's the key to charge yeah, it weekly. Yeah, yeah. 400, luxury mm-hmm. daily. Yeah, yeah, luxury is going to be daily. So, I mean, you can do weekly rates with the luxuries too, but the lower level, like the Jeep Wranglers, you can do, we do like 800 for the week. Like I got a Jeep, I got a Jeep, like I probably show y'all, Um, it's been on like co-signment. Um, I got like, like you gave me your Jeep. Yeah. A guy came to me, he was like, yeah, man, Um, uh, I told him I don't do it no more. I only do exotics. When it comes to joint ventures, I do. I used to take them from people, mm-hmm. but it's only exotic. So you got to give me Lambos and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. for you but, to uh, take it. Okay. For me to, to work with me, but I used to take the lower tier. So I took it for a good friend. I said, look, I'll take your Jeep. He ain't seen his Jeep in a year and a half now <laughs> because we put them on. I got I got six year book of business now, though. So I, I can make sure that my cars are gone. There's no time where, you know, I got to worry about a car just sitting there. But um, so I get the Jeeps. They be gone for week to weeks because people love Jeeps, especially in Georgia and Miami. So yeah, Miami all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeeps are, are easy to get off. But, um, um, what about like those mid tier, like you know the Mercedes C class or E class? Yeah, should, those should, are because that's too. like right there in the middle. That's like it's yeah. it's not necessarily exotic, but at the same time, it's not necessarily economy. How do you use those types of vehicles? Yeah, those are like mid tier, like just like a Tesla, Range Rover. Like those are like those, but they you just can make a little bit more money. It's just a little bit more. But for me, um, those I only use to literally get to the next tier mm. because they make good money. Don't get me wrong, a Range Rover makes great money. Um. Uh, C class will make great money. People love Mercedes, so they they make really good money. But for Mercedes, the maintenance on a Mercedes right. is crazy. Yeah. So I'm cool on it. Like I really don't. I'll keep it, drive it around, trap it out a little bit to pay for the note. Because you know some people don't even want to get my course just to learn how to trap them out. They just want to drive their car for free. Right. So I I got people who do that. They literally have other businesses, but they get two cars just to make sure they have no car note. So any liability, we don't have no liabilities. You feel me? Like where we live. Like everything I do is free for real. I travel here. I came on a flight. I use rewards points. Yep. <laughs> I stay in a hotel, rewards points. I'm everything I do, I fly for free, I drive for free, I live for free. My crib, I Airbnb it out, so it don't matter. So I got a $1.3 million crib. It's free. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it, we don't have no liability. So we got to make sure that if you got two cars, let's say if I want to drive a G Wagon, but I, I I can't afford that well on my, or I don't want it to be a liability. That's also me. a hot item, right? That's yeah. also a hot car to keep. Yeah, if I get a G Wagon, let's just say I get a G Wagon and then I get a, a Prius right alongside of it, and then a Prius pay for the G Wagon. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a free G Wagon. That Prius is going to be going for months. Every month, you're going to be making $1,200 to $1,400 a month. Your note on the G Wagon might be a stack. I mean, depending on what year you get. So I have a free G wagon right there. So I got a lot of clients who want to do that, and they be like, "Mitch, can you?" Have? I'm like, "Yeah, I just I'll take your Prius and just put it out here." I like I post a story right now while I'm on this live and say I got a, a Prius for 400 a week. Who need it? It's gonna be gone before we leave this room. Damn, damn. So would you say w- when it comes to like you know procuring the best vehicles that's gonna give you the highest return on your investment? It's either go economy. Or go, you know, exotic. Don't try not to be in that weird middle ground. Like, that's not you. Know, it's, it's just it's a it's a niche for everybody. I'm just right. saying my particular preference. Your, like, right. it's your preference. Yeah, it's okay. just my preference. I mean, people. I say get what you like. Like some people, right. it's a, it's a way for them to get their dream cars. Them cars, it's, it's a new. It's the new. It's the 2021. You know, what I mean, 21st century swag. Like we entrepreneurs now. It's a different type of ball game. It's a whole bunch of hungry entrepreneurs who want to be able to make moves. So everybody getting their credit up. Everybody, you know, utilizing these things and they figuring out how to do this stuff that we wasn't supposed to be able to do. See, someone said to me uh, the other day, multimillionaire, right? He said, in life, you can give people what they want for fun mm-hmm. and you get what you want after they have their fun. Rental cars, luxury. Fact. So that's that's powerful, man. Yo, but question though. Mm-hmm. I saw on your page, you got OnlyFans. What's that about, bro? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, So every time I, I go on live, maybe if I don't go on live every day, I go on live every other day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and when I do good lives, I give away game all day. So I mean... Rental cars, like I, I was telling you, 
uh, rental cars are just one of the business I have. I have a bunch of business. I got credit repair business. I got, you know, consulting businesses. I got Airbnbs. Clearly, I know real estate company. I got tax business. So it's plenty of businesses that I have, but um, it's just I give away game from all the industries that I learn. So uh, basically, once you become like successful in, in entrepreneurship, you then become an investor, right? Because you you make your money. So now all your money has to make money for you. You don't just sit in the bank account. So I've, I had to put my money in different places and different industries, and I teach all those tricks. So when I teach those things on live, I put them onto my OnlyFans, and then mm. they're allowed to subscribe to those for the people who actually want to use that. Because when you pay, you pay attention. That's just the reality. Absolutely. I, I can get away for free all the time. I, 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 I get on live. It'd be 500 people on the live. And I might give away, like, the Apple credit card play I gave. I gave an Apple credit card play yesterday, and maybe – Maybe 20 people came back and were like, yo, we got the Apple credit card. And then it was the other people didn't use it. They're like, oh. What was the Apple credit card play? To get the 3% three, 3 back or? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, just to get it without a hard inquiry. Oh, Yeah, okay. yeah. So I can give you that play. Um, If if you go, if anybody who got an Apple, um, an iPhone. Mm -hmm. If you got an iPhone, most of us here got iPhone. Yeah. You know. um, You can apply for it right on the app, which is yeah, pretty yeah. nice. You can apply for it. So basically how it works is to, to do the play correctly, to not have a hard inquiry, you got to make sure you have a 700 credit score in TransUnion. Mm. If you got a 700 credit score on TransUnion, this play is for you, and you got an iPhone. Um, once you have those two things, you just go to your wallet. You make sure that your Apple ID has your name in it, your first or your last name in it. And then you want to make sure that um, your address that's on your credit report is when you put on the application. Mm. We got to set ourselves up for success. The address that is on your credit report is the one you put on your application, not the new one you just moved to. That's for any time you're applying for any type of funding. The one that's on your report is the one you want to use because then they don't got to verify anything or try to figure out if gotcha. that's really you. So after you have those things in order, then you just can apply for it. It's going to they're going to pre-approve you for a certain amount. Once they send you that pre-approval amount, what it doesn't matter what the amount is. You're going to leave from right there and you're going to go to TransUnion.com and then you're going to lock your uh, credit report, your TransUnion credit report. So once you lock the report, you go back and accept the offer. Now you're going to get that that credit card probably the next business day. And then they're going to never pull your heart. They're never going to give you a heart inquiry. So you just got a credit card with no heart inquiry. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? Very nice stuff, man. Very nice stuff. Yo, the yo, finesse guys, is real, bro. Yo, y'all need to like the goddamn video right now, bro. Yep. Because there's uh, about 1,800 of you guys watching right now on YouTube alone, not including Twitch. Guys, like the goddamn video. Help this video get pushed in the algorithm because Mitch is giving y'all a bunch of game. And the likes really help with getting it out there and getting pushed in the algorithm because... Ain't nobody giving you guys this kind of game in all different types of business ventures, man. Yo, you a know, lot of value here. You know the phrase "jack of all trades." There you go. I think it's literally "jack of all trades." <laughs> bro, God damn, thing, bro. Hey, yo, I'm a real entrepreneur. Yo, yeah. you ever been in jail? Uh, other than working for the jail, I was in jail once when I was uh, in high school. Uh, I was guilty by association, so mm. I just had to shake hands with somebody. <laughs> I was say like, "You're a clean version of Batman, Kevin." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only, I, I mean, that got, that got. Um, I mean, I got, it got dismissed because they, they said I ain't had nothing to do with it. But I just shook hands with somebody. They was, they happened to be shoplifting in uh, like Sears, and then I went to jail. When I was in there for two days, and I got out. My, my, my parents like worked overseas, or my mom did. Mm -hmm. She was like doing contract work, so I ain't had nobody just get me out that day. <laughs> so I stayed in there for two days, <laughs> yeah. did time serve, and then I got out. So. so, so question though, what is one thing from your experience, right? Because you've been in multiple businesses, multiple mm -hmm. industries. One thing that entrepreneurs get wrong coming up in their space. Oh so. yeah, trying to like what you said, jack of all trades, trying to do too many things. Mm. That's the cardinal uh, entrepreneur mistake or person mistake. We all because we smart. When we smart. We know something about money. We stole something about credit. And we are around certain type of people. We feel like uh, we can do everything at once. So, And then we hear people saying multiple sources of income, multiple sources of income. And yeah. then we make that mistake of thinking we got to do all at the same time. But really what we got to do is find a niche, pick one niche, focus on that niche until it works, till it really cashes you out. And then you can start investing into different things. It's kind of different when you invest. And any business that anybody starts, y'all should never start a business with the intention to work in it. If okay. that makes sense. I like that. I like that. You That's, should be able to get to the, a point where you can kind of leave, give the reins to someone else right. and let it's, them operate. You should it. never think to work in it at all. Like if I start any business, I'm not going to ever be like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to be working for nine. Nah, I'm going to set it up with a system off the jump that can be literally a self-operating organism. So even with the rental car game, like you're going to come in with a system, somebody to answer the phones. So anytime you call my rental car business, somebody, it can be in the middle of the night, it can be midnight. They're going to answer. They're going to take your first name, last name, email address, everything. And I can retarget you. If I want to hit you with ads and things like that, because I'm getting y'all information. Any if I, if everybody on this joint call my my rental car business, it's gonna be somebody answer because I got a service, so I use Nexa on for that. But I got a system to answer the phones. I have a supervisor that once they get that those calls from Nexa, 
they go to the email address. My my supervisor, he checks that out and then he delegates down to the employees what cars got to go to where. And that's who to, or who to follow up with. So it's a system in place. I, got, I know who to hit as far as mechanic. I know who to hit for body work. I know who to hit for roadside assistance. It's all the system that's done. I got policies and procedures, SOP set up. So that anybody who comes into the company, they can just do it. So it's a system. If I start a cleaning business, it's going to be the same. I'm not going to start cleaning up first. I'm going to hire the cleaning ladies. I'm going to have my credit in position. I had a funding to pay everybody. I'm going to shoot ads out. I'm going to pay for marketing. Yo, this is the best cleaning service ever. You can set up any business with the same structure and then over deliver with your customer service. And then you're going to be successful, but you got to be consistent. Most people are just going to switch day because they're smart. They're going to be like, oh man, I've been doing it three months. I made a little bit of money, but I think I'm going to do Airbnb too. Oh, oh, I'm doing, I'm making, oh, yeah. I wait three more months. Oh, it ain't working out as much as I want to. So now I'm going to start a credit repair business. Yeah. And then none of them are successful. They all yeah. just, nope. You got a whole bunch of businesses. They all broke. Yeah. <laughs> you facts. know what I'm saying? So that's the mistake that most entrepreneurs make is just trying to be a jack of all trades and master and I. Damn. And then to, to, I guess, to make it a little bit more detailed in the car rental business, what are some of the top mistakes guys make when they get in? Uh, not getting educated, not finding a mentor. Yeah. They're just trying to do it by themselves. So, um, that happens. So like, even what this going to happen right now. Yeah. So they probably will. It's going to happen right now. So they're going to watch me on here. They're going to watch me on here. They're going to hear all the stuff I'm saying. I got, I got some, I gave them some great plays and they're not going to do the research on how to do everything the right way. And they're going to try to skip steps or they might try to leave from over here and go to YouTube and Google university. And then they're going to crash a car and then they're going to quit. Oh, man, and then you gonna take a big, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, guys, start getting your questions in now. Uh, yeah. we're, getting, we're getting really close to the QA. I can hit some of these super chats right now. Do you want to yeah. ask something else for us before we get into yeah. it? Yeah, one last question. Okay, but no, we can read these. I'll first. read these. Okay, 50 bucks from DL Saint. Thank you so much for the super sticker, yep. Saint. DL Saint, brother. Thank and you, then bro. Five bucks. Uh, YouTube paying again, not allowing me to send my norm. SMH, respect to Pushman. Keep leading from the front, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Deal Saying, And then bro. jumping like Jordan, five bucks. Would it be smart to rent out a Ford GT? Excellent question. We're going to answer. Uh, Chris made a note of all the questions, guys. We're going to get into the Q&A portion uh, right after this question here. And then. So get your so, questions lined up, guys. Brother, you're a young black man, killing it in the game, came for nothing. How was it dating before the success versus oh. now? please Yo, tell us hey look so <laughs> dating for me dating for me was uh always pretty good like i got the other part so i'm tall it's a cheat code you know yeah that. yeah <laughs> we tall we ain't gotta really have much game mm -hmm. so um i never i was always popular with women for real mm -hmm. um but it is a lot more difficult after success for sure only yeah, because facts. you don't know intentions mm -hmm. that's one for two um it's just like if you want to be in a relationship it's more difficult to mm -hmm. pick <laughs> it's just like yeah. and, and you got way too many options and you never want to have too many options and it's just like you think because you got so many options that you should wait but really you just really making it harder for yourself so that's it's, it's difficult I don't, I don't like it see i know that went over a lot of people's heads but think about this right how do you vet who to keep around it's it's really a risk, man. It's it's no way to know because they be lying. <laughs> they be lying. They be knowing. They be having me on the gram for a whole three months and they say they didn't know who I was. I'll be finding out later. And then it's like also they gonna give you you they gonna give you the benefit of the doubt too because of who you is. So you, then they putting up with your shit and they really might not fuck with you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then it, just because of the potential of you, and then you like, damn, I don't waste them because really when the real the real hit the real, they gonna fade. So that's that's another thing. So it's it's risky, man. I'm 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 thinking about it though, because I know I would make a lot more money if I was in a relationship. Yeah. Mm, no, yeah. we're single in the right thing? relationship though, because no, it can make or break you. It's funny because when you're single doing your thing with multiple girls, it's like, bro, focus kind of wings away. When you're mm. one chick, so to speak, in a in a like a I want to say helpful relationship, it can be a lot of shit happen. Most of yeah, no, are married. Uh, yeah. Most of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it keeps you disciplined, honestly, man. One of my mentors, uh runway billionaire. He 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 was just giving game to one of my other homies. <laughs> he was just like, "You'll wait, wait. You'll make way more money if you ain't cheat." <laughs> <laughs> like it is just true. Like I mean, it's just the discipline part of it. I actually met him on a plane, actually. Runway, yeah, man. Run, it was runway, man. Uh, my boy, uh, Lu Louise. Okay. Uh, who else was there? Um, Top Dog Law. We were all on the plane mm, together. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just like yeah, a year yeah. ago. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. They good cats, bro. Especially yeah. runway genius, man. Nobody. Mm. It, it, I ain't seen too many like him. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neo too. Y'all had Neo up here. Yeah, Neo's hard, man. Neo's yeah, hard. Yeah, he's a genius. Yeah, he, he Neo's very smart. Yeah, he's a killer for sure. He's from Philly too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Philadelphia connection, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, 
It's just different, bro. I ain't gonna Yo, lie. We need him on the late night show. <laughs> hey, look, man, put me on there. <laughs> put me on there. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to pop out. Uh, hard. Okay, so we got um we got a bunch of questions here. So guys, do us a quick favor because I see there's uh 1800 of you guys watching on YouTube alone, and then a couple other hundred on on Twitch. So please do me a quick favor. Get us to like 90 percent engagement, bro. Like the video, yes. right? We gave y'all guys a lot of game. Now we're gonna get into Q and A portion here. Um, I'll read these chats real quick. Um, when do you unlock it? Back with the Apple Card Play. Love y'all. Also fresh. I know you're getting down on that boat. When when do you unlock it back with the Apple Card? Just play? a couple of weeks. Just wait okay. two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. Okay. Just in case they hit y'all with that secret pool. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we got ten bucks from uh, just Sean Harris here. Hey fresh. I want to document this for the future. This is my moment. Like how you was a chat Negro of the academics clan. Yep. Uh, and connected with him years later. Y'all literally helped me become a better man. We got you, bro. Shout to you, bro. Big dog to eat. Big dogs eat. How about renting a 2020 wide body Hellcat? Is that a straight play? How much do they go for? <laughs> yeah, Hellcats, they rent out good. I don't rent out Hellcats, though. They're too dangerous. Exactly, bro. Okay. Yeah. It's a risk. Too dangerous yeah. from like just a liability. Like the, the, your they, I mean, might for drive them, too fast. For them, yeah, they just going. It's, it attracts the wrong customer. Uh, and, it attracts little baby fans. They, they want to <laughs> yeah. burn out and, and spend And also, out that donuts. car, bro, most people can't handle it. They can't. They, they really can't. can't. Like, and, and it's just the reality. The so best I, drivers I know. Crash those cars. Yeah, bro. yeah. I'm I'm responsible enough to know not to do that. Like, and y'all shouldn't. But people gonna do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I had a mentee. She she did it. She uh, we told her multiple times not to grab it. She got it. Pfft. Smack first day. First that, day someone crashed. Yeah. That she went back and got another one. Stolen. Wow. Dude, went and tried to revent it in in like uh where was it Tennessee or something like that. But you, uh, have you ever met uh, SRT Bree? SRT Bree, no, I don't she, ring a bell. She's in Atlanta. She drives a lot. She's definitely a car girl, but oh, that's yeah. dope. That's dope. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Uh, Civil Talk, five bucks. Most influential money uh, Monday, bro. This man is uh, walking, talking business plan. Yep. Five bucks from Joe yep. Parker. Me and my wife just purchased two cars for Turo. We put them on Turo today within five minutes. One was booked. Thanks for the gems, bro. Keep feeding the people. We got you, bro. Yo, I ain't gonna like, 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 dude, if you follow his plan and you actually talk to him and he matches you, you can make money. Like next yeah. day, guys, bro, click the link below. Students, get, get this guy as your coach, man. I got some students, bro. bro. I, used to, dude, I used to rent cars before we got the Range Rover, bro. The dude said, Yo, I mean, he's, he's, he's like, Yo, I made 200k. I was like, No, this is not possible, bro. Well, when he broke it down, he's like, Yo, economy cars, I got a bunch of them. I that's got one, huh? That's one. Holy, shit. that's just Toro. So he he not even on the uh, actual getting to becoming a, a rental car company. He's still just using the platforms. If he was off the platforms, yo, y'all money. Y'all say y'all y'all want to quit y'all jobs? Yeah, bro, this go, is man. crazy, bro. Dumb money, bro. Uh, so let's see here. What we got? We got uh, calm ten bucks. I'm a guy with a seven ninety eight credit score. We're working on my driving license. Looking into getting stared. Uh, I think you mean started in two yeah. row. What should be my play? Seven ninety eight credit score. Um, get a course, bro. <laughs> get educated. Get on the block. He probably already got. See, a lot of people already see. This is the thing, man. We it's, a lot of people already got cars. We got cars at home. Mm. That what what do your cars do most of the time? Sit. They sit. Yeah. <laughs> Even when you go to work, they sitting at work. I would be. I would take an Uber to work before. You know, what I'm saying let and let my car get trapped. I'll make money because most of the time, all of us spend. We spend money every day on everything. <laughs> yeah. I, you got to be making money. You got to recoup that somehow. So if you're not a business owner, there's really no way to really get profitable in life, like in in reality. Mm. But you know. All you got to do is, is, is start running the play. Okay. Yeah. So just get into it, man. Yep. Uh, the line's at five bucks. I have a Wrangler. I want to rent it out on two row, but I'm over the maximum, the maximum miles they allow your vehicle to have. How do I get around that? Car has 135K miles. Right. So basically they go off the miles that you say that the car has. Once you say it, they know. <laughs> 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 and then also you can go to a uh, uh, higher car. Higher car don't care about the mileage. Higher okay. car. There okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, five bucks from James uh, Shen. You may have answered this already, but how do you decide what type of an area to uh, a business to start first? Which area, meaning what industry? Uh, I'm assuming. Yeah, right. But how do you decide what type an area of business to start first? Yeah, I think. I, do you mean business, bro? Do you mean geographically? Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Nolan Baptiste, ten dollars Canadian. Question for Fresh and Fin. I guess how can an employee of a rental company uh, know how he can network to get successful? Your opinion is helpful. Thanks. Mm. Well, employer and company, how can he network to get successful? I would say just use use uh, Instagram uh, when you get clients, you know, give them a good yeah, experience. Yeah, every, look, look, every single business point blank period, you need to be taking a phone number list, Mark. email list, yeah. taking a contact list so you can retarget. The hardest thing is to get is new customers. Yeah. So, you know, retarget the ones that already shot with you before. Make sure you over deliver every time. Like it, it takes small things, literally like a handwritten letter with a handwritten note. Like you can get like a little sticky note. 
put the hand in the oh appreciate you mr so-and-so for your business boom give him like a little box of chocolates go to the dollar store get some candies give him a little box that's an over delivery nobody does that at enterprise make them want to just come shop at your company only so that's that's just easy easy small over delivery joints all right perfect and then uh so we got the questions from before uh chris you sent them to me on telegram right yeah hey guys do me a quick favor like the video while i pull these questions up man uh, there's a lot of value you guys are getting here. Um, yep. you send it to me in our chat, Chris, or where is it? Uh, to, okay, to, I see it. Right, yeah. All right. So Robert Romero, no five bucks. How do we use our customers own car insurance to cover the rental car if we do not use Toro? Okay, cool. So basically how it works is some people have transferable insurance. So you got to call before. So when you get to where I'm at, like with a rental car agency, you have to call each person's uh, insurance company before. You basically call, ask if they have transferable insurance, either yes or no. If so, you got to see how much their property damage value is. So what I have is 100, 300, 100. So it'll cover it for the price that the car is worth. Okay. So if they have property damage coverage over the price that the car is worth, they they're in their company is transferable, they will cover it if it gets into an accident. Boom. Okay. So it's simple. Awesome. Nolan Baptiste, $10. Question for fresh fit and the guest. Uh, oh, no, we read that one. Okay. Settle cap. Is it true? You could have too much, too many write-offs. If so, how much is too much? Yeah, yeah, you can have too many write-offs, but it just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, when it comes to getting funding and stuff like that, sometimes they use your tax returns. And if you wrote off too much and you didn't make enough for them to say that your company is profitable, it'd be harder for you to get bigger funding when you want to get expanding scale. Mm -hmm. Bam. Uh, okay, this is from uh, Step in the Name of Love. I'm a firefighter and just got my real estate broker license. I've been building my credit. Looking to buy some property, not many duplexes. Oh no, this was a real estate question. Uh, yeah, bro, get out, get a single family home for in your situation. Uh, jump in like Jordan. Would it be smart to rent out a Ford GT? Uh, so no, uh, only because people they not gonna respect the Ford GT like you do. That's Facts. why you talking about it. Uh, mm -hmm. A Ford GT, they they'll just see it as. <laughs> a fort like and then it just run into the ground so I, I would keep that on ice i would use it on like shows i would do displays with it it's a lot of plays where you don't got to actually rent the cars out i do like advertisement plays like i got a play where you can literally i can if y'all want to put fresh and fit on my windshield on my lambo y'all can pay me five thousand a month it's going to get y'all a lot of traffic mm, i can put okay. y'all instagram on the window y'all tag and it's a lot of us to play in that you can charge you know companies you can go to like different companies doctors people who want to get their businesses put promotion on exotic cars is crazy it's a bag okay. and also uh member q banks he had his car rented out to the amigos for a video shoot yeah yeah yeah. video yeah. shoots is always going to be a play yeah. and if you live in places like atlanta miami where they always shooting videos cars, it's, it's out of there you just gotta be the first person they think about you gotta advertise uh, people people don't don't understand the power of advertisement the difference between successful business and unsuccessful is the ones who advertise the most you gotta be marketing the, it's marketing. That's it. Bro, it's marketing. I, do, it. I don't understand that, bro. <laughs> Academics. <laughs> and then uh, we got Reed G here. When do you unlock it back with... Oh, no, we read that one. That's the Apple Card one. Uh, okay. Any other questions, Chris? Or uh, We have three more, two more. Okay. Let, we'll hit these real quick. We're going to show what girls coming up to as well. Okay. We got uh, MVP Master J. My older brother does Turo. His mentor is him, 500. Now he has three cars on Turo uh, leveraging his credit. There awesome. James Shen. What type of business uh, and, and what industry to start in first is what he was asking. Right, right. That's that's suggested to you. Um, just go with, with your gut. That's kind of how I make decisions when it comes to business. Right. Your gut don't lie to you. I mean, you might got to figure it out. But at the end of the day, like I said, find somebody coming back from where you're trying to go. I might not be a mentor, but it's somebody that you look up to. Um, if you find somebody who's making a lot of money in the industry that you in, see if you could pay for their Bam. mentorship and then you'll get where you need to go. I'm telling you, it won't. you're paying for their mistakes. Yeah, if, if somebody's where you want want to be at, and they've made it, mm -hmm. what this is going to hurt you to, hey, you know what? I'll pay to be around you to learn from you. Right, right. A lot of people want stuff for free, but at the end yeah. of the day, when you pay, pay attention, you'll get it back. If you think somebody's like, if somebody's making seven, eight figures, they can tell you how to make what you paid for their mentorship back. Yeah, true. Yeah, I'll yeah. pay $50,000 for, you know, masterminds, mentorships, 100000 uh, I make it back. I can make it back in a day now, but at the time, you you got to really think about, like, how much are you going to not make by not investing? Like, how much are you going to be spending in the wrong things? How many times you got to, when you're, how many times you going to go to a dealership and they make you pay 10000 down a 2008 car, like, before you start fixing your credit? You got to, you got to invest. And also, investing yourself the best asset. Because yeah. once you know, you understand how the business works, then you can make it work yourself. Yeah. What's the first two words? An uh, investment. Invest me. You got to invest in yourself. For Thanks. any of y'all that want to get into this, bro, I'm going to simply put it like this, okay? Poor people... Okay, spend time to save money. Rich people spend money to save time. Okay, that's what you guys need to do. You need to leverage your time and learn it from someone else that's done it before so you don't get a headache or quit or get frustrated. 
in this thing because as you guys can see there's a lot of areas here where you can mess up with this car rental business and you need mm -hmm. someone who's already well versed in it that knows how to do it so that you can mitigate your risk and not you know go into the hole starting out you know it's very yeah. disheartening to start a business and start losing money immediately because you wanted to save a couple dollars here or there you know what i'm saying and cut costs down to try to figure it out on your own like and that could be a costly mistake same, right, thing, so. same thing with dating yep you find, you find a hot chick you think you know what you're doing you get finessed. Yeah. <laughs> For real, bro. Real talk, man. Oh, how, how you get finessed? Let's talk about that. Oh, tonight, brother. Yeah. Wait, you, it, it, the girls, yeah, girls uh, be, uh, here in Miami, especially, bro. Like, oh, yeah. Because you live in Atlanta mostly, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I got, I got a spot out here, too, though. But yeah, yeah. Miami crazy. The the day in game in Miami is wild. Bro, but you know what gets me? Niggas said they go finesse. Nigga said, I'm gonna get finesse. Nigga, I've been through the finesse already, bro. They can't finesse me now. <laughs> God damn, bro. The lines that pipe up. I'm about to buy a slingshot under my credit and then open a rental company to rent the slingshot through there. I want to do this in Miami. Good or stupid? Interesting. Slingshots. It depends on what you think. Is, <laughs> is it good to you? Are you good? Are you a good decision on that? Mm. That's it. I mean, because it's not, it's very, look, guys, it's very, very simple to make money. It's not hard to make money in any way. It's simple. Uh, the distractions just will make y'all not make money and make money. So y'all got to understand y'all diet. So I tell this to anybody who wants to make money or who wants to be successful in life, whatever you want in life, it needs to be a part of your winner's diet. What's a winner's diet? It's, it's not just what you eat. It's what you listen to, right. what you read, you know what I'm saying, who you around. All that stuff is going to, everything needs to be aligned with what you want to do. If I go down my social media feed, I'm not going to see no video vixens, none of that. I'm yeah, going to see yeah, all bullshit. inspiration. Facts. I'm going to see all credit tips. Unfollow all those see, girls. No, nah, for real. Everybody <laughs> yeah. on it should take like 10 people that, you know, go down your first 10 people you see. If it's not motivating you, it's not going where you want to go. If it's not trying to level you up, why are you following it? That's what you see every day. Because we can't create our own thoughts. Yeah. I'm, the next thought that's coming to my head, I didn't think, I, I don't know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But it's all a part of what I pour into me. You know what I mean? It's all a part of that diet. So everything I'm pouring into me is what I'm going to put out. So if I'm putting yeah, everything true. into my brain, credit, fix your credit, be successful, you know what I mean? Follow through, be disciplined, do this with your money, this, that, and the third. Everything is going, everything I'm putting out is going to be that. But y'all putting in all of the bullshit, like the little, the blogs and all of the bullshit. TV shows. Yeah, Netflix. it's part of the game. Y'all y'all know, all, know yep. all about, yeah, they know all about all of that shit, all about the, uh, what's the, uh, the, the game shit? What's it? What's the new shit? Uh, Squid Games. Oh, Squid Games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Squid Games. Yo, they oh, know no, about the Squid Games shit. They yeah, got the challenges, yeah, yeah. all of that. But when it comes to making the bag or what their credit score is, they have no idea. What's yeah. in your credit report? I don't know. But you know what's on Squid Games. You know that every single yeah. episode. So that's all about your, your diet. If you don't got a winner's diet, you got a what? Loser's diet. It's facts. So you, it is what it is. That's hard. All right. So yeah, man, you could do the slingshot, bro. Just, you know, I guess, is there any, like, I guess one strategy you could tell him that what is with a slingshot? Yeah, I mean he can rent it out hourly. I mean hourly? Yeah, slingshots okay. is especially in Miami. You can do like a, a two hour rate, then do a four hour rate, then do an eight hour rate. Bang, right? bang, rent that. So that's a joint that you would want to rent that you can actually. Yeah, you get can make a lot hourly. of money in Miami. They, they be smacking them up out here, but they definitely uh, rent out here because the weather's always good. Right. Anything drop top in Miami is gonna go. Miami is the best city for rentals. I'm gonna be real, like even economy. Yep. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so. Amara, this question, I would like if you want to answer it. Uh, okay, Victor Jimenez, I got 30K sitting in the bank. Where should I put my money so it at least maintains value? Crypto or index funds? Crypto. <laughs> <laughs> Crypto all day, baby. Yeah. That's the only place you can 50X your money in plus more. Sorry. Yeah. It depends on how risk tolerant you are, bro. But, um, you know, index obviously is safer bet. Crypto is a little bit more volatile. I like real estate, bro. I'm in real estate. Yeah. So. I, I, you know, I agree with Grant Cardone on, you know, buying concrete and steel and having like a real tangible asset mm -hmm. uh, to you. But, um, you know, it comes down to whatever your uh, tolerance of some guys have more risk tolerance than others. So it, it depends on you, honestly. Um, or put it into yourself, bro. Or yeah. Or put it into a business. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Business. All those cash flow assets. Yep. Yeah. All that real estate, you know, stocks, crypto. Uh, index, all of that. It's just it's part of the game. So we go, we we choose what we want to do. Yeah, exactly. it's all going to make money. Just how much? <laughs> exactly. How much and how much are you willing to yeah, like yeah. you know risk? Long term really investments, crypto, baby, all day. Bitcoin, yeah. Ethereum, Polkadot. Let's get it. Yep. No, no, for sure. <laughs> those are those are the coins that are going to come yeah, up. For you real know? though, for real. Yes, and because I, I got a bunch of questions, I do a, a Q and A on Sundays on Instagram. Go a lot live. of you guys ask me, and I will start going live too. Yeah. But a lot of you guys ask me about Shiba, guys. When it comes to like these altcoins, what I do personally is I'll buy the Shiba. Let it go crazy high, and then I'll transition it over to a coin that is actually stable, like an Ethereum Smart. or a Bitcoin or whatever. Smart. I don't actually hold those long term. Smart. Uh, so um, you just want to use those guys as kind of like a temporary stepping stone, stone to get you the real stuff. Ethereum and Bitcoin ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm no. saying? Those are the two cornerstones. That's here to stay. So don't play yourself, long term invest. Put that thing in there. Bang bang. Weekly. Put it, let it come out weekly, baby. All right, guys. So uh, anything else? Any other? Uh, we could Chris caught up. Yeah, we caught up. Guys, please do me a quick favor. 
like the video, comment below for the algo, okay? Because it's going to help a lot. We're getting this put, a video push. We want to definitely make sure everyone get out there. This was a great video, a lot of sauce on yep. Airbnbs, using a car rental business, credit, answering questions, credit, everything. Everything. Getting a goddamn Eurus for 10K. I didn't even know that. You know what I'm saying? That you could do that. I'm about to do that tomorrow, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, could, I mean, y'all look, I don't know if we got more time, but I can tell you how to get every way. I'll tell you every kind of way to get a car. I mean, <laughs> did you? Yeah. Did you have a question on one? All right. I mean, I mean, no, no, you, you you're know the what? car guy. I'm not a car guy, bro. You know, so this, you know yeah. what? this him. We'll do it on Patreon. Mm-hmm. If you guys want the secret sauce, we'll do it on Patreon, and we'll put a clause in there. If you got on Patreon and we do the the live stream, or whatever, or, or like the video, you hit up Push My Pitch. He'll give you like a deal or something, or something like that. Facts. We can do that. There you go. We'll do that uh, for you guys. Nice check. Bang. Yeah, and then last one. one right here. BBA zero eight two eight five dollars. What cars do you recommend for NYC? Good question. Oh, New York. <laughs> New York is the worst place Hell to yeah. cars ever. But nope. just go just go to economy play. Economy yeah, the streets that, is right? bad. But I got the student I just showed you, they in New York. They made they made uh, 200000 this year. W- so would it be far. fair to say the economy is like kind of like uh, a one size fits all for any major city? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's, a safe it's, play? It's, it's, it's safe. pandemic proof, man. So yeah. like, okay. look, everybody was thinking about, oh, man, what you going to do with these cars when the pandemic hit? When the pandemic hit, I was getting more cars because uh, everybody was doing Amazon Prime Now, Instacart. They was doing uh, DoorDash. They was doing all these deliveries while everybody was at home. So I was making more money. Uber and Lyft was still popping. So I had to keep, I had more um, customers in cars. So I had to keep getting more economy. So that's okay. the play. For- so so you, were, you were giving your car out to, to food delivery services? Nah, I'm talking about really customers renting them to make money. So when you, oh, you're solving okay. a problem, okay. yeah. I'm a problem solver. That's what Got you. entrepreneurs who are successful, we problem solve. That's all yeah. we do. That's what I'm I was to say. Like, like they're using your car to do yeah, their yeah, food Yeah, they're doing it to, to work and make money. So Got you. Uh, at the end of the day, everybody's everybody happy. Bang, That's bang. <laughs> guys, like the goddamn video. We'll be back here in a little bit with some ladies, and uh, we'll catch you guys and Go on follow the him next on Instagram one. as well. Oh, actually, no, no, hold on. Mitch, where can the people find you? I know yeah, I've got yeah, the links yeah, there. Yeah. But... Hit me on Instagram at Pushman Mitch. If y'all interested, and of course, just DM me the word right, like I just said. Man, you already know what time it is. I get on live every day, give away free sauce. If you want to learn sauce like that, tap in with me. Bang. And Boom. all his links are below, guys. It's going to also be the top comment. Comment below for the algorithm, and check out our man, Pushman. Like, guys, and this is just like scratch the surface. This isn't even like all the stuff that he has obviously in his course. He gave y'all just a little taste, man. So you want to start a car rental business, side hustle, whatever, this is where you go, man. We'll catch you guys here in a little bit. Peace. Peace.